Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. I wanted to welcome you back to the art room where we're doing the study of if Picasso painted a snowman. And it comes from this book by Amy and Greg Newbold, and it highlights a different artist. And how it starts out, it says, if Picasso painted a snowman, how would that snowman look? Would he be like his other work? Let's check out the book. It says, if someone asked you to paint a snowman, you would probably start with three white circles stacked one upon the other. Then you would add black dots for eyes, an orange triangle for a nose, and a black dotted smile. But if Pablo Picasso painted a snowman, it would probably look like this. Let's sing our hello song and find out more about Pablo Picasso. And our he new hello song goes like this. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. All right, so. I want to say one, two, say hi to you because we know Miss Damian's class at um, Hamilton Elementary are watching. And I got a letter from Nolan a week or so ago, and he sent me artwork, and we sent him some activity books that PBS has gotten for children who write to the studio at this address and send your home address so we can put these in an envelope and send them off to you so you get mail at your house, which is always super great fun. So we hope to hear from you. Either send us a picture of yourself for Miss Lara's class, or you can send a picture of you doing your artwork or you with your artwork when it's already finished. We'd just love to hear from you. All right. Back to Picasso. I'm even wearing the shirt like Picasso because Pablo Picasso looked like this. He was famous for wearing a black and white shirt. If you see a puppet of him, it's wearing a black and white shirt. If you see him in books, he's often wearing a black and white shirt. So I thought I would wear a black and white shirt in honor of Picasso. And next to him is a picture that he created. And it's a woman in a red hat, a beret. I'm wearing a black beret, but look at her face. Her face shows part of her is looking straight ahead and part of her is looking side to side. That is what made Pablo Picasso very easy to recognize. Let me tell you a little about him, because he's from Spain. He was born in Spain, and then he moved to France when he was just a young man. And for a while, all he did was paint with blues and greens, and they called it his blue period. And people thought that meant that he was sad. Because if you say, oh, I'm feeling blue, everyone knows that means you're feeling sad. And then he moved on to his rose period, where everything was pinks and reds. So when you look through his art and you think, oh, that was when, during his blue period. And then he started his rose or pink period or red period. So then he decided that at that time he was only painting things realistically. Every, if it was a person, it looked like a person. If it was a house, it looked like a house. But when he started doing his work where everything looked like it was Humpty Dumpty and it fell off the wall and when the king's horses and the king's men put him back together, it was all crooked. It was called cubism. 
because everything was in like little cubes and sections. So that's how we're going to make our snowman today, I hope. Maybe you just want to make your snowman have a cubist face, or maybe you want your snowman to have a whole cubist outfit. I wanted you to remember how we did the nutcracker like Picasso. I made it so one eye was looking forward and one eye was looking sideways and his nose could be for this man looking forward or it could be the man looking sideways. So when I start to do my Picasso snowman, I'm going to kind of be inspired by this snowman that Picasso might have done, but really Greg Newbold did that one. All right, let me set the book aside and let's do the art by sitting right here. Put this here, put my names aside and move it for tomorrow for the yellow name. So when I say hello to two more friends, it'll be waiting for me right here. Today's artwork, I'm using again, a background piece of paper. And you noticed yesterday I used a light blue. Today I'm using dark blue and I'm kind of choosing these colors because they're sky colors. And I wanted that to be like my snowman was outside in the blue sky. So let me set this down for a second. Put my pointer stick aside. I do like working on the back of this, so I think I'll put this on my lap and move my clipboard because I don't need to tell you thing, anything more about Pablo Picasso. Set that over there. All right, so I have my white paper and I can cut out a full snowman and then I also have my box of scraps. And I know I'm going to need some orange for you know what. That's right, his carrot nose. Oh, did I slide it? Oh, I didn't. I was going to say, I don't usually slide this close because I use it so often. I think I'm going to put maybe a red scarf on him. So I'll slip out a piece of red paper. Oh, that's cardstock. That's too heavy. This has hearts on it. You can see my students were drawing hearts on here. I just keep all this bag of paper so the children can get in here and use it when they want to. And I'll use some black for maybe his eyes and maybe some buttons down his front. Now we know that Picasso stacked his things one on top of the other. I think I'm just going to do his head and his torso. And I'll put that on here and have him standing up. So what I'm going to do is just cut that out so I can then decide how big I need things to be and how much I want the nose to hang off the edge maybe. What kind of hat will I put? Would I like to have a top hat or would I like to have a stocking cap? Now some of you might think that cutting out the snowman was a little hard. You can always put a plate there, a little tiny plate and a bigger plate. So if that's what you like and want to trace it, you can do that. My pencil marks are on this side, but I'm not worried about it because I can just glue him where he's it, like a bust of him. They say from the chest up, it's called the bust of an artist. So here he is, but I want him to be broken up a little bit. But first, I'm going to cut my carrot nose. How I do this so it looks like a triangle, I put two dots at the top and then I go down part way and put one there so that I can connect this dot to this dot, this dot to this dot. It's a dot to dot and I have a pretty good shaped triangle. Is it the right size for my snowman? I think so. Let me cut it out because I can always make it smaller and if it doesn't work out, I can just cut out another one. No big deal, because art is supposed to be fun, not be a problem. So if I have him like this, and I want his nose off to the side, I think that looks good. I just want to round the top like a real carrot would be, because even though Picasso did things cubist and kind of squared off, I'm going to do mine a little rounded off. Now, if I want his nose to stick out this way, but I want one eye to look that way, I'm going to glue this on because I know it belongs in the middle of his face. For me, I'm going to, if you want your nose to be all crazy off to the side, that's your decision. Because you know Picasso, no one would have said to him, hey, your nose isn't in the right place. He'd say, for my artwork, it sure is. So I'm putting this here. And in order for my eyes to be 
kind of wacky, I am going to make one facing forward and one going sideways. Now the one facing forward really looks kind of like an almond shape, like a human eye. So I'm going to put that for this side. Now that's just a black eye like that. But I want the other one to be looking sideways. So to do that, it is also like a triangle. So I just make, cut a diagonal line and a diagonal line, and that shows an eyeball looking sideways. Maybe I want it to look at the uh, other eye this way. Do I? Or do I want it to look that way? Let me glue it on and decide from how it lands, because this doesn't have to be realistic, does it? Because it's a cubist. There we go. Now, what color eye do I think I want? I think I'll put a blue eye. So it's OK to rip it. I'm going to cut out my little circle for the inside of that eye. I'm going to glue it on my white piece of scrap that I cut off of my snowman. Because remember how I taught you to make your eyeball? You glue it on to the white so the color part of the eye has a little rim of white around it. Stay there, glue stick. So I cut around here. And then I just pop it right onto that eye that's looking straight ahead, like this. Glue. You like how I glue it on by touching it to the glue stick itself? See? It has a little background of it. I'm going to do a little triangle to go inside the big black triangle and put my blue eye. I'm cutting it in half because it's sideways. Ooh. Glue stick. I have another one here just in case it fell off. I'm thinking ahead, boys and girls. I'll pick it up after I say goodbye to you. Putting it on here and putting my eyeball looking sideways. I'm going to glue him to my background. And don't you worry if we don't finish this today, because I can always finish it. Because you know, look what I did from the time we did the Nutcracker. I just bring it back. And we can look at it another time. Oh, I really like him. He's off to a really good start, boys and girls. Look. I think I'll just decide how long I'm going to make his scarf and just put a little part of it on there so you know I'm just going to cut it out just because it could be blowing in the breeze. It just makes a little curved line. Put it on here. I like it pretty much. I won't glue the whole thing down. I think I'll just put it like this. I still need to put his mouth and put some more th um, things on him. I might even put some fringe on my scarf. Hmm. When I do the little black mouth parts, I can fold my paper up. And that way, I can put the little coal pieces together. Because now I'll have four pieces of coal because I folded it and folded it and folded it. All right, boys and girls, let me get these on here and we'll say goodbye. See you next time, everyone. Goodbye. See you next time, everyone. See you next time, everyone. Thanks for coming. All right. brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.